Good evening everybody, MG here, MG Covers bringing you a brand new sports handicapping video. Title of this video is what is sharp line movement and what is public line movement and how to profit from both. Super excited about this video. I put out a lot of good content on this channel, but this is going to be a super, super educational video. Can't believe I haven't made a video about this in the past, but if you watch my videos on my channel, I have mentioned this, but you're going to see some great examples of this tonight can definitely help you as a sports handicapper. As always, your first time watching this video, love to have you as a subscriber of the channel. When we get to a thousand subs, I got something super, super exciting I'm going to do for the betting community that's going to benefit everybody. So if you haven't subscribed, greatly appreciate you subscribing. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm NG Covers, cover spell with a Z, you get a ton of content. Uh, simply by following me on Instagram. I put out a lot of nuggets on my story. Uh, so if you follow me, you can get a lot of tips um, and learn a lot about sports handicapping. All right, so let's dive into this video. I'm super excited. The reason I'm laughing is that I've talked about this on my Instagram story, uh, sharp line movement versus public line movement. And it's happened like literally perfect examples in the last two days. All right, so... Um, if you don't know anything about sports handicapping, I'm going to make, I love to make everything very, very simple. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is we have to identify sharp line movement. Okay. So let's go look at yesterday. This was a, a game we actually played. This is the line movement tw between Carolina Panthers, Atlanta Falcons. You can see here right before kickoff, an hour before kickoff, 1149, the line was Carolina plus three. And then of course, look what happens. Immediately after that, the line moves to two and a half plus two and a half. So what happened? You have sharps that are playing this, played this line at three. Now the sports book moved it down to two and a half because they had a lot of money here on Carolina. And um, so they have to make this side over here a little bit more attractive. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So they lower the line to two and a half to get less people to play Carolina, make it more attractive for Atlanta backers. But this is clearly a sign of sharp line movement. Sharp line movement, if you're writing this down, taking notes, is very subtle. And the a great time to identify uh, sharp movement is near the uh, kickoff. This was basically an hour before the uh, game. And, of course, Carolina did win that. It was a close game, but we actually played it on the money line. We got Carolina at plus 120. So again, this is a perfect prime example of sharp movement. And another, uh, if you're taking notes, write this down as well. If you don't know why a line is moving, 99% of the time that is sharp movement, right? Because there weren't any injuries. There was no reason why the line should move in favor of Carolina other than the fact that you have a large number of sharps, uh, myself included, playing this uh, game here on the Carolina side. All right. So let's look at, whoops, is that the right example? All right, another example of sharp line movement. This is a really good one too. This was between uh, yesterday, New England, Patriots, LA Chargers. You can see this is the day of the game, which is important, right? See where it says 1031, you come down here to 8.09 a.m. The line was plus four and a half, right? So that means the Chargers were at four and a half. So we had a tick down. It goes to four, and then again, right before, actually this was a four o'clock game, line goes to three and a half, stays at three and a half. So that little bump, you can see the trend from four and a half, four down to three and a half, um, and it stays there. So again, same deal. You had uh, Sharps playing this line at four. That bumped it to three and a half. So the sports books need to make this charger side more attractive to get more chargers backers, and this line pretty much... Uh, stayed the same and of course New England won that one convincingly so again if you don't know why a line is moving more times than not that's going to be sharp movement sharp movement is very subtle it's not going to move five six points it's going to be very subtle like you saw in this example here Carolina moving from three to two and a half and remember it's going to be right before kickoff or right before game time um, you see here, same deal from four to three and a half and it well, actually from four and a half down to four. And then the final bump was down to three and a half. All right. 
So those are examples of sharp line movement. Um, let's look at some public line movements. And these are absolutely funny. All right, so what we're looking at now, this is the Dallas Cowboys Minnesota Vikings line when it opened. 1024, you see there, right? All right, at 7.53 p.m. when that line opened, opens at Dallas minus one, okay? Pretty good line. I think my line uh, via my model was Dallas, I think minus two, I believe. So pretty much in line with that. In fact, the line moved up to my line. You can see here, people started to play Dallas. I think this is next day. The line moves to two and a half. Well, as we know, uh, Dak was listed as a scratch. He was not going to play. So this is a prime example of public line movement. Public line movement, I guess if I'm defining it, is when everybody is aware of the situation in the game and everybody, the general public, makes this line move. So Dak was not going to play, and look what happened. Public drives this line all the way up to four and a half, so from plus one to plus four and a half. And if you're taking notes, you can never trust public line movement. And you have a lot of sharps like myself. When it comes to entries, here's a great piece of advice. Simply pass on the game. Because how do you, how do you statistically quantify an entry? Like how many points should you um, add to Minnesota for Dak not being out? Well, here's the deal. This is important to think about. This is specifically for NFL. Average margin of victory in NFL is what? It's three points, right? That's more games in than three than any other number. What's the second number? The seven most popular number, average margin of victory in NFL. So all of the teams are in the NFL, regardless of who's playing, who's not playing, for the most part, are within a touchdown of each other, right? Look at what happened with Cincinnati and um, the Jets. Jets beat Cincinnati. So there's no way that one single person even if he's a quarterback, should make a line move from minus one all the way up to plus plus four and a half. That's a five-point line move. They moved past the uh, three-point margin, almost close to the seven. I mean, that was, what, five and a, yeah, five and a half points from that minus one all the way up. No, 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 I take that back. The line was two and a half. It moves to four. Yeah, that's correct. Y'all, that line moved six and a half points. It almost moved a tut, full touchdown which is just insane. So that's another re another um, identifying factor of public line movement, a drastic line move, right? Because it's almost like the public thinks that they're smart, but they're really not. So everybody piles on, drives this number up. Now, this is fascinating to look at this, very educational. Look at this line. So it moves to four and a half, right? Look what happens here at 816, right before kickoff, y'all. The line bumps back to four. Sharps grabbed this line. Sharps knew exactly what I'm telling you. Sharps already knew this, right? So they just sat back, watched this line move up and up and up. And finally, right before kickoff, it's probably reporting late. I'm not sure what time this kicked off. So the line's at four and a half. Boom, Sharps hammered at four and a half. Books quickly adjust, move the line back down to four. So you have on the front end of this, all of this public line movement right here, right? Public's driving this line, thinking they're getting some advantage. <laughs> oh, man, hilarious. And then finally drive it all the way up to from minus 2.5 to, to plus 4.5. Sharps hammer Dallas. Boom, Dallas wins. So you can never trust uh, public line movement. Now, again, this doesn't work 100% of the time, but if you apply this concept, 100% of the time, it will work most of the time. So let's look at an example. This just happened tonight, y'all. Insane. This is Philadelphia Sixers game. Who were they playing? They were playing Portland. Okay. Okay, all this is today. This is 942 this morning. Philadelphia 76ers were minus five, right? And I think here rumors had started that Embiid was not going to play. So now it goes, I don't think it was official yet, or maybe it was, but anyway, this is where it really happened. So it goes from minus five down to minus two and a half. All right, keep this in mind. Now, NBA is a little bit different than NFL, but a lot of parallels between the two. Average margin of, of victory in the NBA, 
11 points. 11 points. So keep that in mind. So the line's five and a half. Now it's moved to two and a half. Um, it bumped back up here to two. I don't think it was official that he was going to play. And then look what finally happens. <laughs> this line goes all the way, cl- ends up closing at plus one and a half. All right. So the line goes from minus five all the way up to plus one and a half. So that is a yeah six and a half point line swing for one player. Mark this down. No one player is worth a six point line swing, line move in NBA. Nobody. LeBron, nope, nobody. Embiid, nobody. Nobody's worth that big of a line. Why am I saying that? Because the average margin of victory is 11 points. So you're going to have one player impact the score more than 50%. There's no way. Um, way overvalued it. And um, as we know what happened, let's pull it up here. Philadelphia wins. <laughs> 113 to 103. Um, now, this is important. This happens so much in NBA. I mean, you will see this time and time and time again. So just to review, you know, the line will start out basically where it should. The public gets a hold of the line. They'll drive it so far in one direction, there's actually value basically sticking with that same team that the line is coming from, right? So you'll see this a lot in NBA. Um, Interesting that we saw it in um, the game with um, Dallas. And I'll give you another example. I don't have the line up. Remember the Vegas-Denver game the week that Gruden was fired? It wasn't huge line movement, but it did move. I think it moved maybe like a point and a half to two points in favor of Denver simply because Vegas lost their head coach. The public was thinking, you know, something was going to happen, you know, different because they had lost their head coach. But you got to remember, it was the same players, same offense, same offensive coordinator. That was an example of a public line move. And I think more than likely you had Sharps on the other side of that. And, of course, Denver won. That was basically a blowout against Denver, I believe, or won by maybe like 10 or something. So, anyway, just to review this, sharp movement, just so we can see it, is going to be subtle, right? Um, Right here, four to three and a half, and it will usually be right before kickoff, maybe an hour before kickoff, a couple hours before kickoff. Um, So, again, real subtle. And here's the example from the Carolina. Public line movement Everybody will know why that line is moving. More more times than not, it's going to be an injury of a star player. Public's going to overreact and drive that line up more than two points. And you saw in this example, six points um, in a football game, uh, another six in an NBA game. And more times than not, you can fade that line movement and you will come out on the winning side, which is exactly what the Sharps did here in this Dallas game when it went to four and a half. So anyway, uh, before we close this video out, I want to show you, uh, we have our NBA power rankings are live now. And just to show you how good they are, this is these are my lines over here. Um, just show you the winners tonight. And the way I do NBA is if a team has at least a three-point, have to have a three-point differential, and we only consider teams that are favored via my lines. So tonight's example, we had Cleveland at minus 13.5. Sportsbook had them as the dog. Cleveland wins and cashes on the money line. And when you're getting five points like that, advantageous to play um, on the money line. Uh, Next one, of course, that Philadelphia-Portland game there. Uh, Take a look at, yeah, Chicago. We had Chicago minus seven. They were plus two and a half. Sportsbook, they won, cashed on the money line at plus 120. And the one we lost was uh, Denver. We had Denver minus 20. They were plus one, and I think they got blown up by Minnesota. So power rankings, the way I teach it, um, we go two and one cashing a plus 170, plus 120 dog. If you want access to the NBA power rankings, we also have NFL, college football. You get access to all of my coaching videos as well, $49.95 per month. If you want to get access to all of that I just mentioned, in addition to all my personal plays, that's $99 per month. You can join for an entire year, save about $600, $4.99 for the entire year gives you access to everything. If you click on the link in the description of this video, you'll see it. If you like this video, love to have you liking it. Helps grow the channel. Subscribe to the channel. We will talk to you guys soon.
stay away from that public line movement and follow that sharp line movement. Peace.